Hi guys, I just wanted to solve a couple problems on your 4.7 worksheet to make sure that you know what you are doing. So I have highlighted three problems on the front side and two problems on the back side, and I'm just gonna go through these quickly, talk about some tips and what you need to be doing today in class. So first and foremost, I hope you took the notes. Um, in the notes, those little half circles on the axes are actually really, really helpful. Um, so I'm gonna draw those up top. We have looked at sine and cosine and tangent and what the values are that you can get as a result when you use inverse sine, cosine, and tangent. So for inverse sine, your angles are going to be between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, so it's going to be on that half of the circle. For inverse cosine, the angles that you get are going to be on the top half of the circle between 0 and pi. And for inverse tangent, your angles are going to be in the same half of the circle as sine. So what I quickly want you to notice is that all three of those incorporate the first quadrant. So I wrote this on my answer key. Um, I'll write it again here because I do think it's important. If you are taking taking inverse of a positive ratio your angle will be in the first quadrant So a lot of these are positive, 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 positive. Once you get down to number seven, you start to see some negatives. So when they're not in the first quadrant, you have to remember what the other quadrant option is to have positives and negatives. So for cosine, um, for cosine, when you have a negative that your ratio in there, you're going to be in the second quadrant. For sine and tangent, when you have a negative, you're going to be in the fourth quadrant. But remember, that's not, you're not going to do all the way around. Instead, you're going to use negative angles there. So let's get started. Arc cosine is the same thing as inverse cosine. And we can draw a triangle for all of these. Remember, draw a triangle, pick an angle to focus on and label from there. So if it's cosine, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means adjacent is root three, two is the hypotenuse, this is a 30, 60, 90. So across from here would be one, and across from the one in a 30, 60, 90 is the 30 degree angle. So that means arc cosine of root three over two is 30 degrees. Now I want you guys to be able to say this both as a degree and as radians. So it's 30 degrees, but that's the same thing as pi over six radians. So there's the first one. The next one is arc sine, which is the same thing as inverse sine. And now we have a negative. So if I'm looking at that, I'm going to be in the bottom quadrant. So I can still draw my triangle. And you'll notice I do the same thing on my answer key. So when you're checking, this should look familiar. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over 2. But I know that that is going to be in the bottom quadrant. So across from the 1 here, this would be the 30 degree angle. But down here, we would call it negative 30 degrees. So that would be negative pi over 6 radians. Like I said yesterday, sine and tangent are kind of nice because when you have a negative ratio, all you're doing is sticking a negative out in front of your angle. Cosine's a little different, and we'll see that now. So inverse cosine of root 3 over 2 is actually very similar to this guy. We would draw the same triangle. Adjacent would be root 3. Um, hypotenuse would be 2 and that makes that have a one. So we know that this is the 30 degree angle, but for cosine, if we're taking the inverse cosine of a negative, it's gonna be in the second quadrant. So we need to see what the 30 degree angle does in the second quadrant. 
Now we know that 30 degrees is the angle between the hypotenuse and the x-axis. So this is 30 degrees. So as an angle between 0 and pi, or 0 and 180, we need to look at what this angle is. So that would be 180 minus 30, which is 150 degrees. Now, as a um, angle in radian mode, that would be 5 pi over 6 radians. All right, so this is just finding the inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent of any of these. I only did ones that go with the triangles. I guess I'll show you one more. Um, we'll just look right down here. So inverse sine of zero. Sine of zero, so I have been doing this. Sine is this section, so I would only really be focusing on one of those three spots. Sine is where the y is zero, so that is right here. So this is zero degrees, which is also zero radians. So when you're finding sine and cosine of zero and one, um, that's gonna put you on your axes. When you find tangent of zero, that would put you on your axes as well, but tangent of one is gonna stay on your, in your triangles. All right, so on the back side, these ones we actually didn't do yesterday, but I am going to show you two examples. So on my answer key, I actually highlighted the inside part of each of these. So think back to Algebra 2 when you did compositions. You evaluate what's on the inside first, and then you plug that into the outside. So this says inverse cosine of sine of pi over 6. So sine of pi over 6, I can find using my 30, 60, 90. Pi over 6 is a 30 degree angle. So I draw my 30, 60, 90 triangle. Here's my 30 degree angle. So if I label it here, I have 1, 2, root 3. So sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 over 2. So I'm replacing sine of pi over 6 with the number 1 half because sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. And you can see that based on your triangle there. Now I want to find the inverse cosine of 1 half. These mean the exact same thing. So therefore, this is the exact same thing as this. Inverse cosine of 1 half. So I can draw a new triangle if that makes you more comfortable. Inverse cosine of 1 half. Here is a triangle, and I can label it based on that. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is going to be 1. Hypotenuse is going to be 2. And this angle here is the 60 degree angle. So that tells me that this is equal to 60 degrees. So therefore, inverse cosine of sine of pi over 6 equals 60 degrees. All right, one more. Before, I was taking the inverse, sines, inverse cosine second, so I started with an angle. I found the sine of that angle, and then I found the angle that created that ratio with cosine. So now I have inverse tangent first. So now I'm finding the angle that goes with if tangent were equal to root 3. So this is over 1. Tangent of this angle would be root 3 opposite over adjacent. Root 3 is opposite. 1 is adjacent. So therefore, this angle would be 60 degrees because it's opposite the root 3. I could add in a 2 there. I don't need to. It's 30, 60, 90. So now what I'm trying to say is that, okay, inverse tangent of root 3 is equal to 60 degrees. So now I need to find the sine of 60 degrees. The sine of 60 degrees, I would take the same triangle or I can draw it again. 60 degrees is here, 
root three is across from 60, here's two and here's one. So that tells me the sine of 60 degrees equals root three over two, opposite over hypotenuse. Therefore, the sine of the inverse tangent of root three equals root three over two. And there you have it. There's a few examples. Um, this worksheet is gonna be due tomorrow, so you can complete it in class today and whatever you don't get done is homework. All of this is just practice, practice, practice. Um, it might feel monotonous right now, but the more you practice, the more it's gonna become second nature and the more you're gonna be able to pick up on different patterns. So we will talk about this tomorrow in class. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you tomorrow.